PhD at uh, University of uh, Iowa uh, in July 2007. And also uh, he uh, received a master's degree at the Cornell University in 1997. And also he was, uh, um, got uh, the master's and also bachelor's degree in, at Dikyo University in Tokyo. So you all know um, about him, so let's uh, ask him to you know, start his uh, Topic is uh, anime and an excess. Transmedia storytelling in anime culture. Okay, thank you. So. Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, and uh, uh, today I'm going to talk about anime culture and uh, anime and excess. This is basically the presentation I made last weekend at uh, Villanova, Uni Villanova University in Philadelphia. At that moment, at that occasion, because it was a formal academic, academic you know, presentation, I read a paper, but this time I'll try to make it more casual kind of lecture so that uh, you can freely ask <coughs> questions and interact with uh, what uh, the content I'm going to present. And I hope I, we, have, uh, uh, we can have a good conversations and interactions in terms of the one of the most popular and important uh, medium right now that is animation and animation culture from Japan. All right, uh, this is part, in fact, part of my larger project that is defining anime as a kind of a genre. And in order to discuss anime as a genre, I use a uh, Linda Williams' theory. Linda Williams is, uh, as you may know, one of the most uh, uh, famous uh, scholars on pornography and horror, and basically, you know, feminist scholar, focusing on uh, the genre, which was not considered to be, you know, the object of academic study. And I'm trying to incorporate some of the, you know, approaches she made in terms of, you know, kind of marginalized genre in Hollywood and applying, to, uh, applying it to uh, the analysis of Japanese animation and even trying to uh, discuss anime as almost like a genre. So basically this is William, uh, Linda Williams' theory in her you know, really famous article, Film Bodies, Gender, Genre and Incest. And basically she lists uh, some of the, some of the uh, uh, shared notion of the classical Hollywood cinema uh, proposed by film scholars interestingly, alm almost all the scholars involved into the project was uh, from University of Iowa. So when I got the education at the University of Iowa, Iowa is heavily oriented toward film theory and basically proposing you know, some standard format, formulas of the Hollywood productions. And I also was uh, influenced by that kind of atmosphere and tried to upload Japanese animations from theoretical point of view rather than, you know, more about analysis of the content or the society. And according to Linda Williams, uh, in film studies, the classical Hollywood style has long been characterized as efficient, action-centered, goal-oriented linear narratives driven by the desire of a single protagonist involving one or two lines of action and leading to definitive closure. So this is something proposed not by uh, Linda Williams, but uh, by uh, David Baldwin. And uh, she uh, presents some counter argument to the uh, dominant film theory in which something excessive or something uh, subordinate or something, something marginal to this central structure should be all considered to be excess or that means you know unnecessary part of narration or even you know even not pay uh, not deserve the attention our attention because just just it's just deviation from the standard uh, it's, uh, that can be said about for example you know pornography uh, horror or melodrama because that's too excessive in terms of pornography uh, excessive sex and uh, uh, melodrama, excessive emotion, horror, excessive violence. Uh, but she proposed that in fact it, it is almost necessary uh, to recognize the possibility that excess may itself be organized as a system. So she proposed several interesting uh, suggestions in terms, of, in terms of how to organize and how, how to articulate those excessive genres. And this is, by the way, you know, her theorization, anatomy, really interesting <laughs> argument that the body excess and expected audience and other point 
I'm, uh, I, I'm not going to cover all the issues, but I'm going to b going back to, uh, because especially uh, for today's presentations, I would like to focus on narration, uh, narrative, or the story. So I'll particularly come back to the issue of temporality of fantasy. Uh, this just, you know, similar, uh, uh, briefly summarize uh, her argument that, you know, she's talking about the manipulation of, of, of uh, audience expectation. And uh, the moment actually that expectation is fulfilled in the film, uh, in terms of melodrama, it's always too late. So because too late, uh, we, 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 we have to cry because we are helpless uh, in terms of the, you know, actual, you know, moment uh, of the fulfill fulfillment of the desire. In, ca in case of horror film, it's too early. So uh, too earliness of horror films create, you know, suspense and, uh, you know, fun and shocking. And in terms of pornography, it's just on time. Or it should be just on time. I, mean, I, I, don't, I don't go into the, you know, details, but... Uh, anyway, uh, if we think, uh, if we uh, if we turn our attention to some of the you know uh, argument or surrounding context of animation, there are many reasons that we can talk anime as kind of an excessive jump. For example, those two programs, uh, one of the most popular programs in the United States in the early stage of implementation or appreciation of Japanese animations. And when I first came to the United States, those animations are put into the almost like uh, next to Playboy, Playboy girls or bikini section. So it's almost like pornographic. It's more like, you know, marginalized genre uh, with, you know, pornographic and violent, violence and, you know, some alternative <coughs> desire, alternative fantasies. So one is Wicked City and the other is Ninja Scroll. Scroll. Those two programs are extremely popular because of the presentation of violence, horror, and uh, uh, something that became one of the fundamental of Japanese <coughs> pornographic fantasies, kind of tentacle sex that you know, tenta tentacle porn, that, uh, you know, that's one of the ways of avoiding mm -hmm. censorship issues. You can't use, you know, actual human genitalia, so why not using some, you know, some uh, creatures, tentacles, and uh, present some fake sex? Again, you know, really strong, excessive presentation of sexual desires and violence and anxiety. And in fact, uh, uh, because of those notorious fames and notorious inform, uh, 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 images about Japanese, you know, animations, in earlier stage of uh, Japanese animation studies in the United States, many scholars tried to in, tried to disseminate some positive side of Japanese animation. For example, you know, uh, the next wave was mostly like Miyazaki films, serious uh, films that could be even a substitute of Disney movies with, you know, contents and themes and, you know, characters and uh, great stories. So it's kind of true that uh, uh, Japanese animation is not a genre because there are so many subgenres within Japanese animation. So you shouldn't talk or you shouldn't just restrict Japanese animation to violent sex kind of strange fantasies. It has a rich variety of you know, content, themes, and styles, and so many things. So in one of the uh, pioneering works of uh, Japanese animation studies, written by uh, Susan Napier, uh, she basically says, you know, Japanese animation is not a genre. It's a uh, Japanese animation as a whole, and it should be appreciated as a Japanese animation as a whole. That's her argument. But I would, uh, I, I would challenge her theory that, in fact, there is, or at least we should notice that there is a excess, there is excessive excess within Japanese animation itself. And it's almost a driving force of Japanese animation industry at some point. And uh, probably we cannot ignore this side. And I, by focusing on this particular side, I think we can talk about a particular appeal, particular important importance of Japanese animation as a medium, or Japanese animation culture, anime culture as a medium. 
So that's the reason I, I want to present, you know, three stage theories, uh, uh, almost like Marxist theory, but the three stage theory uh, uh, of Japanese animation.